Hi, Jamie. What's the uh, review you guys will have done uh, thrown up on the Millwall draw last weekend? I think review, we've done that yesterday and we always do what we do every week. We take some positives and we take some things that we can improve on. Um, and definitely from the first half, the way we started, the way we played, with the ball and without the ball, we were excellent. And that's us. That's, that's the platform we have to build on now and get that consistent performance, um, not only from the first half on Saturday, but from now to the end of the season. Um, and then obviously there's, there's always improvement points you can make in the game and, and we look at that and we work on that at the training pitch during the week. How did you see the goal? Did should should main part have been a little bit stronger there maybe or callous maybe at the back back post or was it a bit of elbows from Matt Smith or I'm not too Yeah. How, how do you see it? I see it as if Millwall, that's what they're good at. They're very good at set plays. Um we've done well on numerous occasions Saturday with the set plays and what they do really well was block and do the dark arts really well. Um so we could have done better, but we admitted that. But um, they are big, strong, physical and very good at it on occasion. We could have done a bit, a bit of help from the referee at times, but no, it's a, it's a fair goal and yeah, we must do better. And just one shot on target at the weekend, and I think that's been the same for four of the last six games. Do you see a, a lack of attacking fluidity at all at the moment? Not at all. If you come and watch training, the amount of goals you score in training and, and how confident the lads are and how good we are at finishing and how clinical we are. Um, even a build-up play to get in there to, get, to go and create and finish um, is excellent. It should now apply that more so in games, um, which we'll look to do on Saturday against a, a good film side. And post-match, Lee Johnson said that there'd been enough to possibly write three books on, um, considering his team selections. When he was asked about making 87 changes this season, you must know Lee very well. You know what goes on behind the scenes. Mm. Um, what does he mean by that? Is what should the fans know about that? About team selections? No, sorry. But he said there's there's um, been enough to write three books <laughs> worth mm -hmm. of stuff. It, basically, it sounds like he's hinting that there's stuff that's happened behind the scenes that that maybe the fans should know about when it comes to team selections. But is it a case that maybe some players have been available at times and not at other times? Well, basically, what does he mean when he's saying that? Well, so many things happen dur during the week with players, um, whether it's injuries, training time, um, loss of form, whatever it may be, um, issues off the pitch. So many things come into it. And then, I think I've said it before, the gaffer and us as, as a team, we pick the team to win the next game and, and try to get the balance with getting the right qualities on the pitch, try and take all the championship boxes. like. You got to be able to handle the ball. You got to be uh, physical. You got to be able to defend set plays, attack set plays. You got to be aggressive. You got to be strong. You got to, you got to have running power on the team. Um, there's so much you have to do and get that balance within the eleven to win that game. And obviously, look at the opposition, what their strengths and weaknesses are, and how you can go and affect that. Um, so, I, I think maybe that what the gaffer's talking about. Um, we've had a lot of change in players from the summer. Uh, we've had a few bad injuries. Uh, you look at Ben Kafobi. Um, he started the season unbelievable. He's been a big miss for us, um, but now he's coming back and it's great. We've got Naki Wells in the building, who's an our goal scorer. Um, so it's just getting the players that have came in to adapt quickly to the style, how we play, getting them up to speed physically, mentally, make sure they're settled, and then ready to produce on a Saturday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Yeah, sure. Is um, I mean it, that that question relates to the eighty-seven changes that Lee has made. Mm. over this season and that Lee Bowie has only made more of. Um, how do you do you see that? Do you think that leads into a lack of lack of coherency because if you're always changing your team around um, then it's going to be difficult to play together on for example a back four or, or do you think that that is not such an issue in these days? For whatever reason? I don't think so. I don't think it's an issue. I think the lads know exactly what's required when they step across the pitch whether it's a four or a five or a three or whatever formation we work on, the lads know uh, the principles and the rules behind that um, and our pressing triggers and everything and how we play in different shapes. Um, I think we're doing not a bad job at the minute with seventh in the league with all those changes that you say. Two points off top six, challenging, pushing them, going into the last ten games in a great position. Um, looking forward to an unbelievable game here at Ashton Gate. I'm the 25 years celebrating this great club. Um, we're hopefully a full house. So. I think sitting seventh at the moment is, is not a bad position to be in with all those changes that you see.
Yeah, fair enough. Um, Frank, did you see Frank fielding at all at uh, the Den? At the yeah, we saw Frankie and saw Luke Steele as well. Uh, yeah. Steele as well, so yeah, good to see familiar faces. I think Aaron Wilbraham was there as well, wasn't he? Some of the old 14-15 uh, side of Brandon. I never saw him. But, um, but yeah, no, good yeah. character. Do you f- are you feeling any pressure at the moment? It's not no f- no wins in the last four league games, mm. nine I think, and nine defeats in the last sixteen. How how do you guys see it? Are you, are you feeling that pressure to get back on the winning trail this this weekend? There's pressure every day. What we do, we try to get the best out of the players every day. And um, there's pressure to win the next game, and there's a pressure to stay and, and get in the top six. And um, we put that pressure on ourselves, and we're always questioning ourselves and um, challenging each other to get better every day. Um, to improve, and we've done that over the years with our league position. So that's healthy. It's always healthy to challenge each other and get the best out of each other, and keep pushing for for excellence. Really. Are you aware of um, criticism on social media, or is Lee aware of criticism on social media from Bristol City fans? And is it fair? I'm not. I don't watch. A lot. I'm not into, interested really in the social media stuff. I, I, not on much. I'm on Instagram, and all I do is put photos of the kids on that. So I don't see much. And I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on stuff. So it's um, does, something does I don't see a lot of. Does Lee keep it, um, tabs on any of that, or does he steer away? I'm not sure. I don't, the gaff doesn't talk about it much. So um, I don't, don't think so. How's the squad looking for the full game? Yeah, strong. Looking good. Um, excited about the game. As I say, it's, it's a great championship game. Two good teams. Um, pushing and challenging to get in that, that top six um, in front of which I said before I, I feel how we see at Ashton Gate celebrating 125 years of this magnificent club so exciting How's Dan Bentley doing at the moment? I think Lee said he's had a groin was it groin problem? Uh, yeah he tweaked his groin yeah. then is he back in he's training? back in training yeah that's which is good news Bruce. but Nicky came in um, the other day against Millwall and was excellent um, a bit rusty in a few th- things that he said that himself um, but we were very happy with his performance and we had great competition in that area and in the squad. Um, so, yeah. Marley Watkins, is he back from Marley's back on the grass, smiling again, um, getting the ball at his feet and running and working hard. And also Benica Phobie as well, back on the grass. So. Yeah, Zach Viner, is he, how's he doing? Right. Zach's back in full training, yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's going back in the swing of things, which is, that is good. Full contact training, because Lee said before it wasn't. Contact, or has that, that changed slightly? Yeah, he's full co- contact this week because um, his shoulder, I had to be careful with that. Um, so it's good to have Zach back um, and now just push on with his fitness. And, and Fulham come to visit, and obviously they've got Joe Bryan and Bobby Reid in their team. Um, will you, do you have to set any special um, mm. conditions to, to face them? Obviously, it doesn't sound like Joe's going to play them, okay? Yeah, I think Joe's maybe. Uh, Tweaked his hamstring, but no, it's great to welcome back two great servants of the club, um, Joe Bryan and Bob Reed. They were excellent for us um, in the first team, and also coming through the academy um, to top guys and obviously top players. Um, so looking forward to seeing them. But we'll speak to them after the game, and hopefully we'll be getting the three points. You expect a different game to the game at Craven Cottage. They've obviously brought in Michael Hector, for example, in January. Mm. That's a pretty good sign. I think he played very well at the weekend as well. Mm. Yeah, it's a good sign for them. Um, we know what Fulham are, they're a possession based team. Um, they've got some real quality in the front four um, and also midfielders. Um, dominant possession, move the ball well. It's up to us to be front foot and get aggressive with them and, and try and stem their flow. And then it's up to us to take the ball and, and cause them problems. So, as I say, it's a great championship game, one we're really looking forward to. Just finally, on the 1 2 5 celebrations. Um, are you looking forward to the big game and will you be getting one of the special 125 shirts as well? Yeah, I just bought one in the shop the other day for Ruben um, so I've got his name and number on the back that um, you wear on Saturday coming to the game. That was a great occasion um, and I think I said there that there's over 40, 50 ex-players coming which will be special with their families um, and just to celebrate this great club and how far it's come and what the Lansdowne family's done for, for this club um, and for the community, for Bristol as a whole uh, it's phenomenal their vision, the drive and dedication to take it where it is now and it's up to us now to, to go and take it to the next stage. And any of your former teammates coming back that you know of at all? Yeah, there's a few old faces coming back which I look forward to seeing. Um, some great players that's played here and I hope we can put on a show and get three points for them as well. I'll we'll have to make sure the stocks of cider are all good. <laughs>
Yes. Can't comment now. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. In terms of going into what's very big and prestigious game, Overmaster with the 125th anniversary, how do you intend to take what you mentioned in training that attacking side of the game and translate it into a match day context when overall this season Bristol City I think are in the bottom three teams for shots and shots on targets uh, do you want to see a bit more of that attacking flair what needs to change up front on the pitch yeah we've got to use the crowd first and foremost the crowd will be right behind us and we've got to use that um, I think it's just when we cross the line the lads are fully committed and we've got to do whatever it takes to obviously create more chances and, and score more chances we know that as a team and we're working that every day in training um, as I say the quality we've got in the group you see some of the training sessions the finishing the crossing getting in the final third the, the build up play is excellent it's now to do more of that in game and it's something we know and we're working on so yeah um, you've always got opposition so you've got to be better in your opposition in all areas um, to then go and create overloads and get crosses and get shots but it's something we're looking to improve on and get better at, and we are doing. And with it being such a special game, what makes Bristol City so special to you? I love the club. I've been here um, in the city for 14 years now. I signed in 2006 as a player. Um, had some unbelievably great times here. Um, it's a special, special place and unbelievable support. Unbelievable support from boardroom down, from the chairman, from the owner all the way down and the fans are incredible it's just a, it's a special place now um, and I hold a big place in my heart and I want to get them to the next level um, but us as a group it's, it's our chance to go and do that um, got a great manager um, he's been here as a player and knows what, what's required um, he's got a real passion and love for the club also and great staff behind it so something we all want to achieve to get this club and get this city to be um, in the next level Thank you very much